by Simon on motorcycle brake system. So let's get on. So here we have a motorcycle owned by one of our group members which is Ahmad Abdullah So this is his bike We are going to use a Yamaha uh, Double S or Yamaha SS Which is a popular motorcycle in Malaysia in the early 80s and 90s So you can see the motorcycle Use uh, this brake system while at the rear side the motorcycle use the drum brake system. So, for further explanation on our assignment, we move on to another topic or another. That's all. Let's go. Next, we move on to the first section of the assignment, which is the theory. The brake system that is assembled on motorcycle is for slowing down or stopping motorcycle from accelerating when needed. Hydraulic brake system and mechanical brake system are used in motorcycle brake system. Most efficient brake system is the hydraulic brake system due to more braking force supplied and can be used at any surrounding condition at the hot or rain. Now you can see here the hydraulic brake system, the master cylinder basic components. First one, firstly we have the brake reservoir which provides brake fluid for braking. Next, the components of master cylinder body which is the parts and features, for example piston, mount to primary rubber cup and secondary rubber cup, and the spring is to repair the piston back to the initial position and there is a check valve to maintain pressure in brake pipe and there is also a snap ring to hold the cylinder from slipping out and there is also a dust cover which prevents dirt from entering the master cylinder and lastly the push rod which is involved in the mechanical brake system that connect pressure between hand brake pedal and master cylinder on the right here we have the picture of the example of hydraulic brake system uh, which consists of the cylinder spring and many next the main components of hydraulic brake system we have the master cylinder brake pipeline brake caliper and brake pedal so this is a diagram here which show the Hydraulic brake system that is being exerted the force on the hand of the rider by pulling the brake lever and then the pressure from the brake lever will be transferred through the system and lastly will push the uh, brake piston to push the brake pad in order to stop the motorcycle or braking the motorcycle in slowing down. We move on to the next slide, mechanical brake system. We have the drum brake which connects the foot which connect uh, to the foot brake pedal. So there's a parts and function. This one the brake shoe or brake lining. The function is to rub when push out to the brake drum wall in order to perform braking mechanism. Then there is a return, there, there are two return springs which repel back the brake shoe or brake lining to the initial condition after releasing the foot brake pedal. And thirdly, we have the camshaft that rotate to pull and push out the brake shoe or brake lining. There is also an actuating lever which is a lever between camshaft and actuating rod that transfer the pulling mechanism from the foot brake pedal to the brake shoe or brake line. And lastly, we have the actuating rod in the drum brake system, which is a part linked to the foot brake pedal that pull the actuating lever in order to push out the 
brake shoe or brake line. So on the side here, we can see the motorcycle drum brake system. Usually being used at the rear side of wheel, uh, motorcycle wheel. And there is a construction here on the right side. It consists of anchor pin lining, brake shoe, which is brake shoe also are the same as brake lining. A cam shell and a charging lever and a charging rod. So on the next side, there is a push rod example. This is a common push rod used in any kind of uh, motorcycle. So the braking system criteria, which is firstly, the braking system able to stop motorcycle when needed. And secondly, always in good and optimal condition. And thirdly, no loose or loss. No loss in braking force and brake power of the braking system. Number four, suitable for any speed, weight, and temperature. Number five, lastly, less need of adjustment, which is also we know precisely work for the braking system. So that's all for the theory. Next, we will want to another section of the assignment. Thank you. Objective 1. To create a complete procedure on how to service the motorcycle and 2. To inspect the condition of the motorcycle braking system and 3. To replace any broken or wear part on the motorcycle braking system and 4. To label all the parts of the motorcycle braking system and 5. To determine the braking performance of the motorcycle before and after service. So today I want to share what apparatus and material used in brake caliper service. Uh, I want to discuss one by one what apparatus we use and the function. So for measuring tape, we use to measure the distance brake test. Phillips screwdriver, open master cylinder cap. For brush, for cleaning brake caliper pipe. Coupling size 12 used to open caliper bolt. T spanner size 8 and 10 used to open the caliper bolt. Box ring size 13 m used to open braking mounting. Common ring size 12, 14, 17, 19 mm used to assemble rear wheel. So for vernier caliper, measure the thickness brake shoe and the brake pad. Uh, and finally, blower and compressor clean the dirty surface of caliper. For material, we use engine cleaning chemical function at X cleaning agent. Uh, and brake oil.5 for brake system use. Thank you and see you again. Bye. Okay, now we will start our procedure to dismantle the brake caliper first to service it. Then we will uh, take out the brake pad of the board, inner board. Remove the brake mounting.
machine. This is the condition of the bush that has been cracked. Alhamdulillah. It's still okay. Okay. Glove, glove. Glove eye. You must wear glove. Open this bleeding nut. We will remove the bleeding nipple and clean it. We will assembly the all the component back.
me clean the master cylinder first Leading. During bleeding, we will open the nipple break uh, size eight millimeter. As you can see, there is no bubble track inside the red caliper. Ayah nak cabut, siap ni tak cabut lagi <laughs> Okey dah Potong oh, lagi Sorry lah tu
Hi and Assalamualaikum My name is Mama Azimi Mama Saimi And today I will continue this video for the data and finding section So for the data and finding section there are two major parts Which is the measurement and visual inspection and motorcycle baking performance test So we move on to the measurement and visual inspection So in this uh, part we will measure and every component of the motorcycle braking system and we expect to check the condition of the braking parts so we move on to the brake pad so we can see in this picture uh, the thickness of the inboard pad is 4.60 mm while the thickness of the outboard pad is 4.52 mm so for our inspection both brake pad are in good condition there are no sign of crack on the surface of the brake pad and we conclude that this backpack does not need any replacement for the time being so you can see in the picture we can see that the backpack has a good amount of thickness of the backpack of the brake pad next we move on to the brake lining so we can see the thickness of the brake lining 1 is 2.98 mm and the thickness of brake lining 2 is 2.81 mm so from our visual inspection both the brake lining are in good condition Still, there are no sign of crack in the surface and we conclude that this, this brake lining does not need any replacement. Then, we also measure the brake dump and brake water of the motorcycle. So, we can see these are the value that we get for the brake dump and the brake water, this brake water or this thickness. Overall, both parts are in good condition. There are no sign of crack or anything else. Uh, both parts are clean for any debris. And we can conclude that uh, all the parts for the motorcycle braking system are in good condition. Today, what we're going to do is the motorcycle braking performance test. So, for this test, we want to obtain two data, which is uh, the distance for the vehicle to stop, for the vehicle to stop, and the time taken when the brake applied. So, uh, let me talk a brief summary for this uh, test. So, if you can see there, there is a speed bump at the at the car. So. That will be our start position. So from that, uh, our our driver here, Abdullah, will accelerate from that point to this point. Here yeah, we can see the uh, update here. So the moment he reach the point, he will uh, push his ever. Uh, he will start braking the motorcycle. So from that point, we will record the distance for the vehicle to stop and the time taken for the vehicle to stop. So for this test, we will do two tests, which is for the low speed is 30 km per hour and the medium speed 60 km per hour. For fast speed, 90 km per hour, we believe it is quite dangerous to do because we don't have enough runaway and you do this residential area. So that's all for me. Let's get started. <laughs> So we got the time taken here and we're gonna use uh, the measuring tape to measure the distance there. So let's go. We just pull up. Next, we will move to the second section for the brake data and finding which is the motorcycle braking performance test. So, for this test, we will only test the performance of the front brake system or this brake system because we only service on the front brake system only. So, you can see on this table, there are, these are the results that we got before servicing the motorcycle. And the next table shows the result that we get after servicing the motorcycle. So we can see in this comparison, we can see that uh, we are able to get a much shorter distance and much shorter time taken to stop the motorcycle after we service just the after we service the motorcycle. Hence, we can conclude that the braking performance of the motorcycle increasing after we service the motorcycle braking system. That's all for me. Thank you. Question number one. Based on the observation, what is the condition of the brake system 
for the vehicle before our team done a service to it. So based on our observation, we can conclude that all the components for the brake are in good condition except the brake caliper seal that was worn out over time. Number two, how often do we need to do maintenance for brake system of a motorcycle to make sure it was in good condition and safe to use? So for the disc brake system, we need to do maintenance every 20,000 miles or when the brake pad is down to 1 to 2 mm. For drum brake system, we need to do maintenance every 20,000 miles or in some motorcycle, there is a tiny indicator on when it should be replaced. Number 3. What is the problem that commonly encountered on brake system for motorcycle? So, first we have brake binding which is brake tendency of binding the liner to the brake drum and remain in applied state without pressing the brake lever. Number 2. Brake jada which when the brake produce ringing noise when applied. Number 3. Excess loss of brake fluid which is caused by leakage at reservoir or caliper. Number 4. Air in brake line which is happen if the brake pad has worn out or problem with the brake caliper or piston. And number 5. Brake fade which is when the brake cannot hold on to the wheel for prolonged usage. Discussion number 4. In your opinion, which is the better brake system for motorcycle, disc brake or drum brake system? So overall, the disc brake system is much better choices for motorcycle compared to drum brake because it has higher stopping power, better heat dissipation, and less maintenance needed for higher longevity. Number 5. Why most of the motorcycle on the market use disc brakes on the front and drum brake on the rear? This is when we apply brake, the whole vehicle weight are shifted to the front because of inertia. So, higher stopping power are needed to ap apply at the front to effectively slow and stop the vehicle and this is when the advantage of the disc brake are fully used to optimize the braking capability of the vehicle. So now we move on towards safety precaution. So the first step is keep work areas clean and organized. Never wear loose clothing or clothing that is stripped or torn always wear protective gear as appropriate for the repair never smoke in or near repair base or garages make sure fire extinguishers are close and appropriate for all potential fire types never place hands tools or other objects near the engine while it is running make sure the vehicle is properly supported be aware of the vehicle's temperature before beginning any work. Now for brake fluid comparison, there are four types of brake fluid which is dot 3, dot 4, dot 5 and dot 5.1. So the most important characteristic of the brake fluid is the boiling point. There are two types of boiling point which is wet boiling point and dry boiling point. So in general, the dry boiling point is when you buy a new brake fluid and you pour it stay out from the bottle to the brake fluid reservoir so that is the dry boiling point of the brake fluid so the wet boiling point is a boiling point when the brake fluid has been in the brake fluid system for maybe one year or something and it has absorbed some moisture it has absorbed some water so that is the wet boiling point so for the wet boiling point of the dot 3, it is 140 degrees Celsius. For dot 4, it is 155. Dot 5 is 180. And dot 5.1 is also 180 degrees Celsius. For the dry boiling point, 
dot 3 is 205 degrees Celsius, dot 4 with 230, dot 5 and dot 5.1 is 260 Celsius. Now, dot 3, dot 4 and dot 5.1 is polyglycol based, while dot 5 is silicon based. Now, this polyglycol based is hydrophilic. That means that they have a tendency to absorb moisture. Now, for uh, the silicon base, it is hydrophobic. That means it repels water and it has small compressibility. However, even though it does not absorb water, but if water does enter the brake fluid system, that can create pockets of water and create further problems. So, for advanced technology of motorcycle braking, first off we have anti-lock braking system or otherwise known as ABS so ABS works to prevent motorcycles wheels from locking during braking so what is locking so in a vehicle with no ABS system when you press on the brakes too hard that causes the wheels to stop turning immediately this is known as locking the problem is your momentum still drives you forward and this causes your vehicle to skid across the surface of the tarmac. At this point, you have no control over your vehicle anymore. ABS uses speed sensors on both wheels to accurately determine the wheel speed as well as sensors to determine when a wheel is about to lock. ABS will adjust the braking pressure accordingly to prevent the wheel from locking and assist with maintaining the stability of the motorcycle. So next we have a combined braking system. So generally, the front and rear brakes of a motorcycle are operated separately. In Malaysia, the right brake lever is for the front wheel and the left brake lever is for the rear wheel. Combined braking system helps in achieving easier operation while braking. The CBS are designed to activate the brakes on both wheels by operating only on one side. When the rider presses the rear brake lever, it activates both front and the rear brakes simultaneously and this helps in safer braking and better control of the bike. So the third is the emergency brake assist or EBA. So the task of the emergency brake assist is first to recognize a potential collision with a vehicle or obstacle ahead, then to warn the rider and to support him to perform the necessary braking maneuver in to avoid an accident if this is at all possible. So there is a built-in radar sensor to detect other vehicles ahead and they will trigger a warning. If there is no response from the rider to decelerate, the radar sensor will send a deceleration request to the brake ECU and the engine ECU will close the throttle. So, brake pressure will increase and the motorcycle will begin to decelerate. Thank you. Okay, right now I'm gonna conclude what we have done throughout this assignment. Okay, so uh, the first one is uh, we are able to identify which brand of motorcycle is used. Uh, for this uh, assignment, we we use uh, Yamaha Double S, <coughs> and then type of braking system on the motorcycle. Uh, for this motorcycle, uh, it is used. The uh, disc brake on the front and drum brake on the rear. Okay, so next the background of the motorcycle uh, braking system, which is uh, the component which component is involved uh, in the braking system. Next, and then problems existed before service is done. So we are able to identify what are the problems, uh, such as. Uh, the brake is not uh, too grippy before the service okay so the second one uh, we are able to conduct a motorcycle service with detailed procedure on how it is done so uh, we have shown the uh, procedure uh, in the 
uh, previous video so uh, you can rewatch it back and then next after the inspection and test done we can conclude that the condition of the motorcycle still in good condition but a few parts uh, had been replaced due to some circumstances so uh, the part that had been replaced such as the uh, rubber part uh, which is uh, uh, it already tear okay the fourth one is all the components in the braking system had been identified and its function uh, it had it had been explained by our members Amisha Koyum in the uh, intro introduction and then uh, we are able to differentiate between this brake and drum brake and which one is better so uh, we are able to list some of the advantage and disadvantage of the uh, between this brick and the drum brick and then the final finally uh, we have discussed about what is the suitable time to do maintenance on a motorcycle so uh, we have discussed uh, how many kilometer uh, in a month I guess in a month uh, should we do the maintenance on a motorcycle so our motorcycle still in good condition and can be used okay that's all from us thank you for watching for this video i hope you guys like this video and thank you very much